Hey Bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a dedicated series review of The Tight Child Trilogy by RJ Barker. The Tight Child Trilogy consists of The Bone Chips, Call of the Bone Chips and The Bone Chips Wake. In this trilogy we are following a young man named Joran who has been the captain of a bone ship and he is on a black bone ship which basically is a crew of the damned, those who have been discarded by society, prisoners, they are misfits in some way shape or form and he has been doing a relatively abysmal job as a captain. So when one of the most revered captains of the fleet gets sent to his ship she decides that she is now going to be the captain. When a sea serpent like creature begins to emerge, the ones that are used to create the bone chips and haven't been seen in many years. There is a lot of discussion around going and hunting it for its bones. That being said, that could invite a war. A war that could be coming to an end if no more bone chips can be made. The new captain, Mayers, decides to take off and try and take down this creature before either side can get their hands on the ship and reignite this war. This book in particular took a lot of getting into. There is a lot of terminology in here and I don't think I have ever taken so long getting used to the terminology. I had to consult the glossary all the time because a lot of the terms are really similar. So for context we have a deck holder, a deck keeper, a deck child, a deck childer, a deck mother and then you have a ship mother and a ship wife. So there are a lot of terms that are very similar it took me a while to get into and then on top of that also the way that these ships run because they are bone ships and they are blown through the air and driven by what's called a gulame which is a type of bird that is humanoid that can help blow the ship faster etc. There's a lot going on in this world and it took me a long time to get used to it. I initially didn't even know if I'd be able to make it through the first book and then by the end of the first book I really got into it and it became like a solid four star read and then the sequels just they really got me. They had me in their clutches. I absolutely loved this series by the end of it so it was one that was worth pushing through for me. The characters of this series take a little while to warm to as well. They are very abrupt people. They are people who have led hard lives. They are people with very specific views. They are potentially some of the uneducated people. They are people who have never known any different and therefore have not really had to think about a different life and therefore different values. And it's a fascinating take on the lack of privilege and therefore lack of knowledge that comes with that. And I think it was handled in a really fascinating way. My favourite character in this is probably the Gulame. I really enjoyed them as a character. I loved their abruptness, the relationship that they eventually form with Joran as well was amazing. But there were just characters that I didn't know how much I loved them until you were afraid for them. You're afraid they'd get hurt, you're afraid they would die, they are missing, they are being harmed and it, you don't know. You don't know how much you care about them until you're put in that position of like no 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 I don't I don't want that to happen to them. And I think that was handled really masterfully. The plot of this series is interesting because each book does very much have almost a self-contained plot leading on from one another. So in this one, with our aim being to try and prevent a war, in the sequel them being almost targeted, in the third one it being about survival, there are so many things and it, so much about it still throughout the theme of the entire trilogy being about deserving a better world, about those who are disenfranchised, those who are downtrodden, deserving a better world, being willing to die for a better world and the way that that is used in this book and discussed in this book is absolutely incredible because it's not a I'm willing to die for my country, it's not an I'm willing to die for my family, it's I am willing to die to change the world, to shape a better world 
I am willing to do whatever it takes to get there. And I think that was absolutely incredible. The magic system in here is absolutely fascinating as well. I'm not 100% sure I understand parts of it, but we do have kind of like a communication device happening in a way with these sea serpents, which I thought was handled really, really well. It's a bit spoilery because it doesn't really come up until later in the series. So I won't talk about it too much, but the magic system was absolutely fascinating. The social system, especially the hierarchy was also amazing because we had a matriarchy so we have all the women being the ones in charge and it's not done in this glorified way it's not isn't the world so much better when it's run by women it's the world sucks when there is a class divide so when there is any kind of divide when there's any kind of oppression it doesn't matter who is in power it matters what the power structure is and I think that conversation really struck a chord in here and I think it was handled really really well because there were discussions about why women would be more prevailed upon to rule why they should be the ones ruling and all of the arguments were really valid it being a horrible society didn't actually invalidate that either all it did was talk about how the gender of the people in power the identity the race of the people in power doesn't matter the power structure does the society as a whole the hierarchy is what matters and i think that it was a fantastic conversation and a really interesting political and social system that also then transfers over onto the way that the ship is run as well we do tend to have a ship wife it tends to be run by a woman and i think that, that was also fascinating having women captains be the norm and the, the disparaging comments towards men of the well you know for a man i suppose you're doing okay was also quite poignant especially given that i imagine that rj barker's primary target audience is probably male so i think the conversations around that were really well handled i think that rj barker did a really good job of writing the women as well he could have very easily just written men but with breasts he didn't do that he very much made them believable women I never questioned their gender at any point and I for the most part think that it was just all around handled really well and the conversations that were had coupled with wonderful characters and a wonderful plot to drive it all forward so overall fantastic series book one four stars books two and three five stars if you are looking for a maritime fantasy or if you are looking for something that feels vaguely pirate-esque if you are looking for a takedown of society and an interesting insight into rebellion if you are looking for a matriarchy or if you're just looking for characters that will grow on you without noticing it will sneak up on you and then suddenly they are people you care about i would highly highly recommend this trilogy. But that is all for this review so let me know if you've read this series and your thoughts on it or if based on my liking of this series you have a recommendation for something else then do let me know in the comments down below. I'll hopefully catch you in another video soon. Bye!